Hello folks, it's another beautiful day in the simulation and things are a bit different than the last time we were on the bike together. There's a lot of history in the making in uh, the streets of the Midwest and, and beyond to be honest. I haven't been keeping perfect tabs on the news because I'm trying to be present with uh, the local community and I'm trying to take some breaks from consuming too much media. There has been a lot of pretty exciting community growth and togetherness to be honest. I wanted to take you on a little ride through what Milwaukee looks like right now because I know a lot of people are keeping up with the news and the news just tells you what's sensational. That's their job to get views and you know arguably we're all trying to monetize attention in some way but some are more sensational than others and I just wanted to take you guys through the streets of Milwaukee and kind of let you know that <laughs> things aren't in shambles things aren't pure chaos to be honest there's been a lot of I mean from what I've seen progress and conversation and rallying together so Right now, we're going north on Holton and going through a neighborhood of Milwaukee called River West. And <laughs> I already filmed this portion this morning and had some great little monologues about, oh no, look at that, hold on. Let me get off here. Yeah, there's been murals popping up and a lot of community efforts to, I don't know, take care of everybody and to rally. Anyways, as I was saying, I was going through River West this morning on a peaceful morning ride. There was a lot less traffic, but kind of going over the history of the place. The footage got corrupted, but I was riffing off the cuff and I was talking about how cool of an area this is and how it's been a really important hub of like kind of new wave ideas and community and certainly arts and culture. Almost all the major Milwaukee streets have been through fairs of protests. We are! We are! We are! We are! For late night protests when people were standing up against the curfew, people were going through in the morning and cleaning up. I was part of a protest and that thing was running like clockwork. Issues. There were thousands and thousands of people gathered moving through the streets. People had water, people were provided for, people were safe. No justice! No justice! No justice! No justice! There were whole carloads of people who were making sure everything was working out and so what I ended up doing was <laughs> I found my way to contribute by hopping on my bike and helping block traffic you know had my concerns of course about social distancing and all that it was so awesome to be able to be really useful on the bike 
and contribute in a meaningful way. The protests were thousands and thousands of people. As far as the eye could see, I didn't need, I never saw the end of it because of how big it was. And it was peaceful the entire time. But can we say that black lives matter? Thank you. We had um, seen the police presence uh, whenever we would maybe skip through a couple streets to get ahead to block traffic as people were coming. So we could reroute cars that were surprised by the march and so that we could keep obviously the pedestrians safe because we were dominating that whole street. Blocking and rerouting traffic was, was instrumental in making sure that there wasn't any conflict of course. But there was a police presence, but they stayed at the perimeter. They stayed usually a block over from the, the main drag, and that worked out really well. It was not so confrontational. It was not so tense. And we walked for miles <laughs> through tons of different neighborhoods. Well, I rode, <laughs> and there were no issues. Those are cops. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> they parked right behind our bikes. Even the Bucks <laughs> joined up with the protest later in the day. So it was a pretty big moment and this was day eight of most people's protesting, or at least the protesting going on as a whole. I don't know. It was just a, a pretty incredible experience, I have to say. And it's the kind of stuff that isn't coming up in the headlines because no one wants to hear you know, thousands of people gathered in the streets and absolutely nothing went wrong. <laughs> so all this is to say is that I kind of want to be some boots on the ground in Milwaukee, let you know what things are like here and, and how people are feeling. It's been a lot. I've been pretty exhausted, to be honest, because a lot of absorbing information, listening, learning, opening your mind up, talking about solutions. and It's a really big cultural moment internationally, which is pretty exciting because a lot of this hasn't been in the cultural consciousness in a real way for a long time. I feel like I had nice tight statements this morning and now I'm just kind of meandering, but I hope all of you have been staying safe and sane and have been living and learning and keeping an open mind about things. I think it's important to share information. I think it's important to be transparent. That's why I wanted to make this blog. It would be completely disingenuous to act like it was business as usual in Milwaukee because it hasn't been and it it really shouldn't be anyways lots of interesting things in the works <laughs> in my world as well i'm wrapping up my website and i just kind of on the low published the new collection and the new site amidst all of this you know it didn't quite feel right to be promoting it online at least in uh on instagram or places where a lot of conversation like targeted conversation is happening in people's networks so this is a little secret note to you to check out the new collection of designs inspired by the Zen of riding and motorcycle visibility. So go to greatlakesupplyco.com to check those out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you ride safe, be well, and don't forget, Black Lives Matter. I just want to show people what's happening. I just want to be a voice in the abyss on, on the internet that's just showing what Milwaukee's like. Right now we're on Humboldt, riding north towards River West. And I think River West is a really interesting neighborhood. A lot of people who have left Milwaukee and come back, they say Milwaukee is like Portland before it got, you know, kind of mainstream. <laughs> I've even seen that in the comments on my videos when people see Brady Street, they're like, oh man, this reminds me of Portland. If there's any place that has been kept authentic and wonderfully weird and creative and diverse it's river west it's certainly not as pristine as the east side and i think that's that's kind of what makes it essential for fostering the arts river west is full of amazing like arts culture from kind of the you know highbrow whatever that means of the florentine opera company to the more DIY scene, there's a lot of 
music house parties there i mean at least pre-pandemic we'll see what the scene is gonna look like this summer and so they're they're a bit different than you know just a party <laughs> it's not a dj playing it's like often touring really small touring bands and local bands they tend to go off of a donation basis so you just you know throw, throw five bucks in a fishbowl and it uh, gets divvied up between the bands it has and I, you know, double checked this online, it has been notoriously a pretty integrated town because it's, it's part way between the east side and the west side, and it brings together a lot of communities. I mean, if you dig into it, there is a distinct River West community, and sometimes it's for the better, sometimes it's not. I think that people do really amazing, creative, important things here. All that is to say, <laughs> You know, there's been some more important things happening in not just River West, but the nation and issues of systemic racism that kind of get swept under the rug because people try their best to ignore it. Milwaukee's not in shambles. Um, some real stuff is happening and some real political force and, and people are finally paying attention. I mean, a lot of people don't like protests because it's inconvenient for them. And that is um, kind of the point. <laughs> but. You know, it's a sleepy Monday morning during the pandemic, during a really, I don't want to say it's a volatile time because man, being a part of the protest and helping usher people through the streets on Saturday, it just felt more communal than ever. I mean, when people rally for a cause like that, something that's important, something that people are finally seeing and in an organized way, because you know, in, in Milwaukee, these have been conversations. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if, if everyone gets exposed to them, but you know, literally, how can you live in a city and not notice the disparities between how people are treated, the opportunities they get, the funding they get, and the way the police interact with them, and and the way they're like a lot of different systems are poised to keep some people down, and you might consider that kind of conspiratorial, and you might think it's not affecting you, and. Well, that's pretty cool if it's not affecting you, but I can guarantee it's affecting other people, whether whether you believe it or not. And these aren't excuses. These are just the facts. This is just the world we live in. I think one of the biggest things, I've been exhausted, man, because <laughs> I've just been consuming so much information. I've been taking a break for the most part from social media. Like I'm checking it intermittently, but that that's just is too much to be honest. <laughs> but I'm doing more long form content. I'm listening to podcasting pieces. I'm just trying to learn and listen. And I don't know, I just want you to, to look and listen and not just listen to the traditional media outlets, see what real people are like out in the streets, see, I mean, even places where there's like rioting and stuff, look at why, <laughs> talk about why and, and do it without assumptions or judgment. You know, a lot of people weren't paying attention until things got a little whack. <laughs> Not that they have to stay like that, and not that that's my speed, but people are paying attention. I, there's plenty of people who, even in my own network, that were skeptical, and then the longer this goes, the more they're like, okay, let me get to the bottom of this, and they're like, oh, damn, word. <laughs> Long story short, you know, Milwaukee's got its problems, notoriously segregated, you know, with our fair share of issues, but it's a beautiful place. I love my city, and I love the people in it. I just want to do right by them, and... I've never really been one to use my platform. I mean, everyone, you know, you live your life and you're a little bit political. It's impossible to be apolitical in everything you do and, and what's the point in that? You know, we all have values. I just want to use my channel as both an escape and a, a space for feel good content. And, you know, I've tried to make thinking man content. I've tried to make things that make you maybe think about what you were told, maybe make you think about how you can evolve or or have other priorities or I don't know you let me know what my content means to you I think we can all benefit from being a little bit more open-minded from being a bit more generous and to doing a little bit more listening than talking to give to give people space to tell their story and for you to you know take it seriously not everyone has the same experience of this world as you do and and you've got a unique experience too, obviously. I was talking to some people at the protest who, that was their eighth consecutive day, and man, more power to them. I could never do that, but that is a full-time job of political activism, and, and good on them. It's a worthy 
undertaking and I'm going to leave some links in the description of if you're just like, you know, a fan of Milwaukee as I am, I'm going to leave some kind of Milwaukee specific links. You know, there's a lot of community organizations doing good things, especially with young people. If you kind of want to be on more the, the creative arts end of things because media is big. Media affects how people see experiences outside of their own. Storytelling is powerful. Storytelling gives people empathy and you get a bite size of someone's experience outside your own. I just think that film and television and, and music are so important. One organization that's doing art and activism and just, you know, old-fashioned fun in an amazing way is No Studios. They also happen to be a client of mine and they're great people all around. So check out No Studios. They're not a non-profit, but man, just see what they're doing. See the kind of, the ways that they're really subversively making this city a better place. Thanks for watching. Ride safe, be safe, and Black Lives Matter. Auf Wiedersehen.